Now in the text that we have read this morning, it was after the last supper. This was the final major teaching session Jesus had with his disciples before he went to the cross. The words that we read this morning are like the words of a man on his deathbed. You know, the moment a person knows that time is of the essence or you don't have a lot of time, you cut away all the crap. Jesus had no time for introduction. He had no time for beautiful language. He went straight to the point. If I'm going to teach you guys one final message, this is it. The kingdom to which you belong is a result-oriented kingdom. I am the vine, you are the branches. He said, every branch that bears no fruit. <laughs> now listen to this. The Greek word there um, that is translated, cut away, actually is the Greek word, a hero. It actually means to lift up. Because you need to understand that the Bible says that whoever comes to him, will he no wise cast away. See, God essentially does not give up on people. Are you with me this morning? So what does he do to the one that bears no fruit? Okay, a hero says he lifts up. And in agriculture, see, Jesus was talking to people who understood agriculture. Bible theologians are of the opinion that as a matter of fact, this teaching session took place in an olive groove. And so they could see physically what he was talking about. What they do is when a plant begins to grow, okay, when it begins to grow after some time, it has a lot of dead weight. All right, there's a lot of wood, there's a lot of leaves, and sometimes when sunlight is blocked, the tree or the plant will not be able to produce results. So the concept there is God cutting away the unnecessary things and then lifting it up so that it can have access to light, okay, and oxygen so that it can produce results. What the Bible is saying essentially is God is looking for fruit in your life. God is looking for results in your life and if you're doing nothing about it, he will do something about it. It will touch your situation. It will touch your circumstance. The second category of people we see are those who bear fruit. Okay? They are productive. But what do we do? What does it do to them? Bible says the fact that you are being productive is not enough. It will position you to produce more. Are you with me? It will position you to produce more. So the kingdom you belong to is a kingdom of results. Let's look at some scriptures this morning. Luke chapter 13 and verse 6. Luke chapter 13 and verse 6. Let me read verse 6 to 9. It says, Then he told his disciples this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now, have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Number one, I see here the patience of God. Oh, I'm not going to wait three years for results. So you need to understand that you have not been kicked out. That whole hell is not broke, has not broken loose in your life does not mean that God is excited. He's patient. He says, for three years I've been coming for results and I have not seen results from this tree. Amen? It says, cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Be conscious of the resources God has placed at your disposal. Be conscious of the opportunity God has placed at your disposal and ask yourself, am I enjoying them or am I producing intended results with them? Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I will dig around it and fertilize it. So this is the attitude of God. He still does not want to cast people away. He said, I will do something about him. I will do something about his situation to see to it that it produces results. I will fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, cut it down. Which leads me to the point. You don't have forever to get your acts together. I've said this before, I'll say it again. The same grace of God people are using to make advancement in life is the same grace some people are using to repent. God understands. He feels me. He understands my plight. He knows my condition. Okay, but regardless, look at this story. This was not the only plant in the vineyard. So every time you give yourself an excuse for not producing results, somebody somewhere with the same circumstance, with the same challenges, is producing results without excuses. Amen. Ask your neighbor for me. I hope you're not on extra time. <laughs> Ask another person. I hope you're not on extra time. Let's jump to chapter 19 of the book of Luke, verse 24. This is the story of 
the parable of the miners, okay? Uh, we know the story, but I just want to read the end from the New Living Translation. From verse 24, it says, Then turning to the other standing by, the king ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one that has 10 pounds. You know, I told you last week that the series we just concluded is going to lead to this one. Okay, everybody is wondering what is the key to abundance. I want more money. I want more opportunities. I want more breakthrough. And the Bible is telling you this is the key. Verse 25. But, the, but master, they said, he already has 10 pounds. Yes, the king replied. And to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. So ask your neighbor for me, are you doing something? No, ask it boldly. Ask that person one more time, are you doing something? Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, this is the key to abundance. Stop complaining about your small portion and do something about it. What you have is good enough for where you are. Start. Are you with me? Start. There are so many single people until they have the kind of money their colleague had to do the kind of wedding their colleague did, they think God has not blessed them. God says, you start with the little. You may not have a grand wedding. It may be your daughter that will have a grand five-year birthday. If you start using well what you have, in the text that we read, I read a book years ago by Bruce Wilkinson, and I saw these principles there. How that in that text, Jesus identified four levels of productivity. And I want us to look at those four levels this morning and begin to look at your life and evaluate yourself and see whether you're producing results. Four levels of productivity. The first one is no fruit. Okay, no fruit. We don't need to talk much about that. <laughs> no fruit. From there, we move to the next level. Some fruit. Okay? Some fruit. And from some fruit, we move to more fruit. You can take us back to the text so that they can see it. And from more fruit, we move to much fruit. Go back to the text. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Move on. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. That's the first level. While every, bear, every branch that does bear fruit, that is some fruit. He prunes so that it will, be, it will be even more fruitful. That's more fruit. Go to the next line. You are already clean because of the words I've spoken to you. Next. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No barn can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Next one. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Can you see that? No fruit some fruit, more fruit, much fruit. And by the time you get to verse 8, Jesus established the minimum standard for the kingdom of God. Verse 8. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. So don't be okay with some fruit. Don't be satisfied with more fruit. Showing yourselves to be my disciples. See, now, John chapter 8, I mean, verse 32 says, if you continue in my teaching, then are you my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And says, look, for you to call yourself my disciple, you should be producing much fruit. Say to your neighbor for me, excellence is the minimum standard in the kingdom of God. Oh, say it one more time. Say, excellence is the minimum standard in the kingdom of God. Say it one more time. Say, excellence is the minimum standard in the kingdom of God. Yeah.